him. What's your topic? Are you My standing topic, on it? But you're not going to die on the hill. I'm not going to die on oh, okay. it. Okay, you're just standing on it. I will okay. fight him on that hill. This is a stupid thing to die or I will argue fight on about, that period. Hill. <laughs> um, so my topic is brought to you by one Snowbike Mike, a.k.a. my favorite person to talk to in life. Wow. This is one of our one of our best friends out there over on Patreon. We get to talk to him every once in a while doing our Q&As. Yeah. And he just, speaking of bringing laughter, that motherfucker yeah. brings I enjoy him. hits. I enjoy him. Snow He's Mike funny Mike's as amazing. all shit. Yeah. So last time we talked, we had a discussion about ticket scalping and how the hell it works. Mm. So I did a little research into it. Did you? It, just a little bit. Okay. By a little bit, I mean, <laughs> Google it five minutes ago. But I do have some articles that I, I'd like to refer to at some okay. point in this topic. But I just want to present it to the table. How the hell is this a thing? It is fascinating. We all, we've been to concerts. We've been, some of us have been to sports shows. Um, sport, I love going to a sports show. <laughs> There's always Seeing these motherfuckers. My favorite athletes. He's <laughs> <laughs> dingers. At the the dingers show. In the, yeah. So there's always people out there and they're always selling tickets. They're always trying to buy tickets. What's going right. on with this? How do they get all these goddamn tickets? They buy them. Costco. No, it's fascinating. It's a fascinating thing. I've, I've thought about it before, but I never thought about it too deeply, actually, until we talked to him on, on Skype. And it is when I think about it, I've been to many, 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 many sports games in shows. my life. Sports shows. Events. Sports shows. And uh, I've been to many, many, many concerts, right? So you see these things, and I've scalped before. Like I've totally bought scalp tickets and I've sold tickets. Me too. So like so to me, like the only time I ever sold tickets was in when I was in Boston. I've told the story, I think, when I would go to Yankee Yan Yan when the Yankees would come to town, obviously it was a big deal. And uh, I don't know if they still do it, but Fenway would release two hundred standing room only tickets every day, night before the next game. And you'd, it would be like actually be like in the morning, like six in the morning. So I used to sleep out there sometimes. I think Ramon used to come sometimes, and Ramon. and they they would sell you a maximum of two tickets for twenty dollars each. And all I would do was I'd buy two, I'd go with one of them, and I'd sell the other one for forty dollars just to make my money back on both tickets. And then and that was it because standing room tickets suck. But uh, and, and you know, and I've purchased obviously you know uh, tickets from people as well. But to me, it's like it's just it is fascinating. Getting a glimpse into the ecosystem. Oops, sorry. When we were at uh, IGN, we worked right. We worked a block and away, a block mm -hmm. and half away from AT and T Park where the Giants mm -hmm. play, and it would be a madness down there. People down there with the signs around their necks. And there would be guys need tickets, buying I'm tickets, tickets, selling tickets, parking passes, everything you could possibly imagine. Well dressed individuals, clearly making money, making deals on their phones, with uh, with an amazing amount of like entrepreneurship, I guess. But there is like I do not understand the buying and selling nature and how you make money because it seems like when I'm walking by in the fourth inning, they're still selling these tickets. So they're obviously holding on to excess inventory. Right. My only theory could possibly be that they're buying these things second, third and fourth hand from major corporations that have 40 or 50 seats per game and they never use them. Like you have to imagine Facebook probably has or a Google or Twitter probably has not only their box for their executives, they probably have like 50 tickets per game. Sure. And they're just like, well, no one, you know, we don't even, we forget to even have, just have to, They probably have to give them away, though. Do you think Facebook's really selling those tickets? No, they're giving them away. Yeah, what I'm saying away, is yeah. that someone is probably taking, like, there's probably something where someone's like, I'll take 20 of them. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, fuck that. And then they sell them right. to someone who then sells them. Yep. Is that right? So from the limited research I did, what it sounds like is, you're right, it is Facebook and it's these big companies that get a shit ton of them. Then there's the, the smart entrepreneurial motherfucker who runs this shady ass business where he hires all the people that he sends out to do it and their thing is they know that even like those the people out there that's the last line of defense before that there's the stub hubs and all the the websites and shit where that's where they're really making money because they're marking those motherfuckers up three four times the price of the tickets so they're making a ton of money there the people we see on the streets that's the end that's the last the last ditch effort to try to make some money back so they're paying these guys minimum wage to be out there sometimes not even minimum wage they'll just give them tickets to be able to go to the concert or the sports show or whatever the hell they're, they're doing and they get to stand there and do all that stuff and that's just to try and make a little bit of money back but their thing is these guys their business is multi-million a year so what they're doing is they invest so much that if they lose millions of dollars a year it's fine because they're making millions of dollars a year like more so that's the whole game there is they're so totally they buy like it. they'll buy in bulk or they'll get in bulk 50 tickets knowing that they can sell them for two to three times as much and take a loss on how many they sell yeah, but end up netting positive in the end. So if they get their 50 because of how cheap they get the 50 in the beginning. Right. If they only sell 10 of them 10, right. for the outrageous prices, they've already at least made more than they spent. Right. So then all the rest of the money, that's why like the tickets get pretty cheap towards the end. That's all just recouping extra. So that's gravy for them. So what you're saying is the guys on the street 
aren't mm-hmm. the guys that are going to Facebook specifically and getting them. This no. is an outside organization that's actually interfacing with Facebook. Yep. And then those guys in the streets are just kind of the, the just the, the worker bees. Yep. The, the worker bees. There. They're out there. The queen's sitting at home. Where do the pre-sale people enter into the picture? Because we, you know, Mike Mitchell he had 49ers season tickets, so we always got first crack at anything that's coming to Levi's. And so I imagine not him, but like other people, if I had that and I was mm-hmm. like, oh, cool, Taylor Swift's coming and I don't care about Taylor Swift. This is alternate universe, Greg. I, for some reason, care about the 49ers and I don't care about Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. I have season tickets. They offer that. I didn't buy those tickets, right? And then try to flip them myself. Is yeah. It, I assume there's a network underneath the kingpin. That's, so that's the thing. That's a totally different. There's a lot going on here. So from, from reading this, what it sounds like is when these, these concerts or the, the sporting events, they, the number that they say of attendance is tickets sold. So it's not actually people there. So they don't give a fuck, really. Like the the question of how is this legal? There, it does get to a point of city by city. Like each ordinance has different rules on how you can scalping, re- yeah, yeah. scalping resell, and are, is it illegal? Is it not illegal? This is a big thing, and and it's just a side note to get back to it. A big thing at Mizzou when we we'd go camp out for Illini tickets at the bragging rights game at the Edward or down in uh, St. Louis. Um, you couldn't resell the tickets above face value. So what people would do is go on eBay and put the two tickets in there along with a pen. Mm. And you're buying the pen, but we're including these yeah. tickets. And See, that, that, that's the workaround. So from what it sounds like, in the majority of places Genius. in America, and there's definitely exceptions, but in the majority of places, you're allowed to resell tickets. You're not allowed to Make a sell profit. fake tickets. Oh, okay. And that, like that's a, the obvious thing. Yeah. But you, you cannot uh, lead people to believe that these are tickets that will work. Even if you're using any weird pen bullshit, where it's like, oh, you're buying the pen and this this ticket to this thing that needs to be a legit ticket. Oh right? yeah, yeah okay. and but the the weird thing there is if there if it, that happens outside the event, if they sell that, the cop needs to see it happen, or else they have nothing to go off. Gotcha, can't get they, you. Yeah, so then because I was reading stories about people that got in trouble where they sold fake tickets. There was a cop; they had to grab the cop, and then they had to find the guy that sold them the fake ticket, mm. and that wasn't enough. They had to then. Show like follow them and wait till they did it to somebody else to catch them. I'm like, all right. So how did this Shit come up with deep. Snow Bike Mike? I don't remember. Okay, but it did. I mean, does, no, it sounds it came, like oh, it, came up, it came up literally being like, what is the deal with this? How yeah. does this work? And I'm like, that's <laughs> a great <laughs> fucking question because you know. I've yeah. often thought in situations where I like I you know I, I go to some high profile sports games or more likely go to high profile concerts or whatever. And I've often thought I remember when I saw Faith No More when they had first come back. Um, substantial rock band hadn't played in a long time, and I and, and and I and I uh, saw them at the Fillmore, I think, and and I could I bought two tickets, but I could have bought like a maximum of eight, and it crossed my mind where I'm like, I could make a thousand dollars profit by buying all these tickets right now, easy. But then like my whole thing is like, I'm not really hurting for money at all, like none of us are, and I'm like, I don't want to do that to a Faith No More fan. I'd rather at least make someone else do that to them than, than rather than me. I don't want to do that or make it so that six other people that really want to see Faith No More can go. It's not even the work thing. It's like I just think it's not right. You know, like at some point, like I don't mind. I, it, a part of it is like it's capitalism and that's fine and that's fantastic um, if you want to do that. But I just don't want to get involved in that because I'd be really fucking upset if I wanted to see Faith No More and the only way I can get a, a ticket is some asshole selling it for four times what he paid for it when I just want to go see this music, or whatever. And the band's not seeing any more money. You're seeing it. So it's like. Mm-hmm. So I, I can kind of sympathize with that. And I don't really want to get involved in that kind of stuff. You hear that a lot with PAX East and PAX Prime Passes. They're calling it PAX West now. Did you know that? I've By seen references to that. I didn't know that was official. Yeah, they're calling it PAX West. It's As a little weird. Prime. Yeah. Um, saw the logo for the first time. It, I mean, it does put down the other shows. But uh, yes, yeah, so, well, PAX Prime is probably the better show. Oh, I agree. Well, PAX East is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah PAX East know. is nice. But so anyway, like... Uh, the one thing I like, South, though. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I like to do is when I go to I go, when I go to Jets games is I play is I play what you know the Pornhub game of chicken. Um, Pornhub's Pornhub's ticket prices scale wildly from week to week in the NFL. If you pay attention, <laughs> what what's so funny about that? Oh. Porn no, somehow I said porn. <laughs> I was like, I, I was, was like, like, wait I a thought, minute. Oh, I thought we were stop on the same here's, thing. Why, here's why I got scared. I was like, holy oh, shit. Why did anyone tell me? Have I been buy, buying a well, ticket you, to Pornhub you all said this it time? Like, you said it the first time quick, then the next time oh. confident, and the third time we laughed, and then you're like, what? And then I was like, wait, am I missing? Yeah. Is he going somewhere? Well, that'll be a good video you can put on the, for- the new forum post that you should check out about good videos. Stop Hub. The yeah. Stop Hub game of chicken. Uh, week to week, wildly, the prices uh, fluctuate depending on how teams are doing in the matchups. So, like, you can have these really terrible, like, Jets Browns matchups in, like, week 17, where both teams have four wins and you can get, you can, like, basically, they pay you to go. Or you can, like, wait. So, like, we play this game often with my friends back home, and we played it last time and we lost terribly, where you can, like, really wait 
and see and like hope for, against hope that the guys at the Jets are going to play week seven when you go to the game, game they tank and then no one wants to go to that game or it could be like a really competitive game like they're predictable ones everyone always wants to see the Patriots play the Jets and stuff like that so you could get those tickets as early and as cheap as possible for me uh, I'm more fascinated by that market because that market is totally driven by uh, market economics as opposed to like um, as opposed to like the last minute people that go to these games and want a ticket or like the desperation that people will pay like to pay like five, six, ten times more than ticket va- face value. So I I encourage people to go to Pornhub to watch porn, but to go to StubHub to see that to see the to see the uh, the wild scaling and ticket prices for NFL games specifically. It's fascinating to watch. And if you play the game properly and you wait long enough and you're willing to not go to the game at all or pay an exorbitant amount of price, you can get these tickets super cheap if you fucking just wait and wait and wait and wait and wait till the fucking very last minute. And one of my friends got really up. One of my friends got really upset with me um, when I went, went and saw the Jets and the Colts play a few years ago because I didn't wait long enough. And the Jets were like 2-0 and or 3-0 and and I bought the tickets and then they lost like three games in a row or something like that. And the ticket prices fell like 50 or 60 percent. We paid way more than we should have for the tickets. But that's kind of the way it goes when you... The game when you, It is because the only way you can really avoid it is to pay... Uh, face value for the tickets when they're out and and the fact of the matter is for almost any NFL game or MLB game as long as it's not a playoff game or a game that has some playoff implication or just some great players in it or whatever like you can always almost always go to the games for cheaper than people pay them for those tickets uh, it's, that's kind of the what's interesting the about trick. scalping is that I, the internet hasn't made it irrelevant I and mean, it's worked hand in hand I thought you know when it started and, and I remember when StubHub started up and it was like go here to get your tickets or even when Ticketmaster finally got a, <clears throat> a working online portal it was like, oh, I wonder what this is going to do. When in reality, like, yeah, outside of <clears> IGN, there's always people there because there is that off chance you come out and, hey, for ten dollars, twenty dollars, you can get a seat that's not terrible and go in yeah. there and get a hot dog and watch it. I'm like, I don't know. It sounds like, from reading these things, it sounds like it is on the decline to the yeah. point that it's almost to the point that it's not worth it for even that last line of defense. Because Interesting. The internet has made it so good that they are profiting so much because you can just stuff. go. I mean, you can go on stuff up on your phone. Like you could not buy it for some weirdo where you're worried about the ticket being legit. You could just get it on your phone yeah. outside of anywhere through three G. I, I want to read a bit of this because it's. I think it's interesting. Please this do. is from Billboard. Uh, Ray Riddell writes from con- the headlines Confessions of a Ticket Scalper. Mm. Billboard's candid Q and A. Mm. So you've been active in the ticket ticket brokering business, and he responds, "You know how many airline miles guys like me have? I haven't paid for a plane ticket since they came out with planes for using my credit card. I like you. I like you a lot. What's it like out there in your business? It's out of control these days. I've been in this game since it was invented. I made my money, and this business is on the downside for me now." One of these days, brokers are going to piss off the wrong people in the prosecutor's office, and they're going to go after them criminally and make it stick. When the shit hits the fan, I want to be able to go to sleep at night. I'm like, damn, this is one of those motherfuckers you could tell is making a shit ton of money from yeah, this. Yeah, that or he really has an overinflated sense yeah, of money. Yeah, he's just awesome acting, right? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, because like, he starts naming numbers later. I'm like, all right, so he really is, is doing some shit. So what do you mean by out of control? And he goes, the bots. I met a guy who told me he had 600 modems in his piece of crap strip mall store that generated so much heat the neighbor couldn't get their temperature right. So I'm like, all right, this guy's going somewhere with this. So you're talking about the, auto, the use of automated bots that hit the ticketing company at on sale with thousands of requests for tickets. How did brokers used to operate, say, 25 years ago? Those guys were no angels, but they had actual businesses. They were checks and balances. These guys today that sell to StubHub and these other sites are able to lock up the entire inventory on these screens, decide what they want, and dump back the rest. Mm. Sometimes they hire some, some computer genius to do their dirty work. Give me the tickets. I'll make the money. I'll take the risk and put them up on all these secondary marketed boards. There's another type of guy that says, I'm going to find me a guy in India to write this program. So it's this whole network of shit where they're just scheming and doing all this shit. And then... There's like the live nations and stuff that mm. make their fan clubs and all that. And that's that's their last ditch effort to try. So you're talking about the season ticket holders. Yeah, that's them trying to hold on to control and power of this gotcha. stuff because there's these guys doing all this whole thing. So it's like, why take a risk on tickets that aren't a sure sell? A ticket source might say you can't just cherry pick me and take all the, the Springsteen. You got to go buy some of these other crap shows. So I'll say, OK, send me the crap shows. I'll get rid of them. But then the hot shows don't always mean we make money. So pretty much they will get the hot ticket items that they know are going to make a shit ton of money through these deals, but then that means they also need to sell out or sell all of the shitty mm. sports shit that they know is not going to sell. Sports shows. Yeah, the sports shows. Harlem Globetrotters. Because just selling those tickets means that the the sports people can say that they sold this many tickets, mm. even though there's not many that many people there. Gotcha. So there's, there's a lot of business going on. Fascinating. Dirty. It's Dirty super pool. interesting. Super, super interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm, wasn't there a show... About, and not not a, not a, not a nonfiction show, but a fiction show about about scalping. S- not scalping, but like a, what what Tim was more talking about, like where there was a legitimate business of people buying and selling tickets back in the day, like reselling tickets. I I just remember, I think I know what we're talking about. Was it on Comedy Central? But I I thought it was nonfiction though. I thought it was a guy that did a bunch of schemes. 
constantly and every episode was like different maybe that's what it was thing doing one of these it was like 2006 schemers maybe that's what it was cranky anchors no south park anyways i think it's really interesting oh, i not, like this I'm, stuff it's not a show i knew someone that worked at one of those uh that's so that wasn't a show at all it's actually someone i knew uh he made the modems <laughs> he set up the modems uh no but so yeah i don't quite um i don't quite grasp it from a technical standpoint but it is it is clearly quite lucrative yeah it sucks because um, that is the yeah. thing you know your band's coming to town your show's coming to town you, you, like, you know like weezer when, when they came through or were getting ready to come through and taylor swift it was very much like all right 8 59 it's nine o'clock and like refreshing the page trying to make it work it sucks that there's some robot computer I will, 600 modems out there i, I will the say servers. this though to i mean and i don't want to jinx myself or you know and i know people have had bad experiences but there's never been an act or a sports event or anything that I wanted to go to that I really wanted to go to that I was ready on, on second one to buy tickets that I wasn't able to buy tickets forever. Really? Yeah. No. Oh, man. You haven't tried to buy Kanye West tickets. Well, Kanye West sucks. Fun, you know. Burn. So I wouldn't want to see Kanye West. Kanye's more of a Faith No More guy. Yeah, yeah, Faith No More. But, but like just any any high profile, low profile things, like just random big bands and obviously very, very uh, appealing sporting events or whatever. I've, I've never had, if you're just, if I was ready, de- like second one. Sure, but it's one of those things where I feel like I'm second one and I'm like at the Weezer show, I'm still like, Five rows back, not terrible, but That's like awesome. I know, but I wanted I would have totally been front row if I could. Does Wizard yeah. play arenas? Yeah, and you're complaining about being five I'm rows just back from you the know. stage. Are just you kidding? Letting me? You know, robots got it. Robots were in there fucking around. I think the guys that are seven thousand rows back at the arena are you know going to be a little more. So I hope they're know. not tall robots, Greg. I want you to be able to see the show. <laughs> All these fucking cyborgs. Could you believe that Weezer played the venue that we kind of funny live too? Was that like when they were big? Yeah. It's pretty crazy. It's a, it's a pretty historic concert venue. Yeah, I mean, but Weezer. I mean, it must have. I think it was a secret show because uh, Weezer can play. I, I mean, could smell can sell that place out in about I could two still seconds. Smell rivers in the background when we were back there in the dressing rooms. I could be like, yeah, I could. I was here. trying to. When you see Weezer, do they play all their good music or do they play like a lot of new stuff? Depends on the show. Like the best show I ever went to for them was uh, they did the Memories tour where they it played was, their albums. It was a retrospect. It was a the first half was a retrospective backwards, and then they played Pinkerton. Uh, start to finish. It's cool. I'd rather see the blue album, but night, I, I would. I would, I would rather blue album. I would rather. I would rather. But yeah, I, was, I wouldn't want. I don't know if I want to see them anymore. They mix in. Yeah, it's new stuff and old. Because I don't so. even think I know anything. Beverly Hills is the last song I remember. That, oh, yeah. that song sucks. Mm. Everything before that was okay. They would keep fishing and hash yeah. pipe and I all those kinds of music stuff. video to keep fishing. Yeah, me too. That's what the Muppets. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was I like that a lot. But like, I just yeah, I just I don't know that I would I don't know that I would vibe with them anymore. It's like the reason I won't see Bare Naked Ladies anymore. Sure, because you yeah, damn well know that I can play anything from their good albums. Well, they don't have the guy anymore. So that That's true. As well. Everything else. I think they what still the hell's going song. on with uh, Guns and Roses? They're back, They're back, but Axel hurt his leg like Dave Grohl did. So huh. he's just like laying around because all these singing. buses and shit. I'm going by, I'm seeing billboards that say Guns and Fucking Roses. I'm like, what the hell? I would I would I would totally go to a GNR show. Although, but Slash is not it, is he? I think they I thought it was everybody's Buckethead played Slash. with them for a while back in the day. Yeah. Uh, and Slash wouldn't play with them. But I think Slash is back now. Bucketheads gone. I think yeah, that was the big and, thing. It was a reunion thing. Blair went to it. And uh, it. Mm. Prophets of Rage now is the big thing that's making mm. making the rounds right now, which mm. is sounds quite interesting as well. Although I don't know, I don't understand. I didn't read deeply enough but like what happened with Zach De La Rocha and why he's not yeah, with that's Rage. rage. That's, rage they, that's Zach Rocha. It's Rage with um Chuck D. Yeah, Chuck D and uh the guy from um Cyrus I'll be real. So I be real. I almost said Bun B, which would be even better. Um, <laughs> Bun, they Bun B playing with Red Jensen, she would be a dream doing Rage songs though. Uh, they're doing Rage and Cypress and Public Enemy songs. That's apparently. pretty fucking awesome, actually. But there's got to be a reason why Zach Taylor Rush is not involved. I don't know if they just they fell out. My theory is that you can't be a 55 year old man rapping about how much you hate the federal government and how you're scared of the FBI anymore. I just don't know if that works. I think you still can in this climate, in this day and age. I think it'd be fine. I just watched Citizen Four. That's why it's terrifying. Snowden, NSA. I know we talked about it. Yeah, I know. Over lunch. Just saying it for Greg. Sometimes on when I start talking about documentaries, Greg just goes like this. You know, I love documentaries. Clicks actually. off. It's just that and normal thing. Back. Whenever there's like a natural end point to a topic, you just keep on going. And so that I'm wasn't just, me I'm just holding time. my breath, ready to throw it out there. Why are you blaming it on me? Because you always do it. That topic was brought to you by Harry's. A Harry's shaving set will make the perfect Father's Day gift. It looks cool. It feels special. And it's something dad will actually use. Dads can be impossible to shop for, Nick. I'm not getting shit for me. For you don't want to get another tie or pair of socks he's never going to wear, but you also don't want to get something really practical that doesn't feel special enough to be a gift. Thankfully, Harry's has got you covered. While supplies last, Harry's is offering a special limited edition shave set for Father's Day. Get one for dad and get one for yourself too. The limited edition fa- Father's Day shave set includes a matte black razor handle, a chrome razor stand, Harry's moisturizing foaming shave gel, three of Harry's handcrafted blade cartridges, and a travel cover, all for $40. Plus, it comes in a sleek, giftable box 
with the option to add custom engraving and a personalized card. Harry's also has uh, uh, shaving sets at different price points starting at $15. Get one for yourself. Go to harrys.com right now and redeem a special offer for fans of the show. Harry's will give you $5 off your first purchase with the promo code kind of funny. All one word. Don't wait. Economy shipping for Father's Day ends on Thursday, June 9th. Oh, bad news, Jack. You missed it. That's Harry's. H-A-R-R-Y-S dot com. Enter the code kind of funny at checkout to get $5 off and get dad something he'll actually use this Father's Day. That's nice. <laughs>